alive today. What better news is there than that? So Lord God Almighty, we come to you today and we just want to say how grateful we are that you, our God, would give your life for us. Amazing love. How can it be that you, the King, would die for me? Praise your name. And he, thank you, God, that you live and you reign eternal. Yes, you Lord. reign immortal. You reign supreme. Thank you, and Lord, you live. You live. You live and live in our hearts and be alive here today at Hope Center of Christ. Holy Spirit, come. Come and reign on us. You, we Lord. want to feel you. We want to know you. Thank you Lord. We want you to speak to us to touch us, to heal us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, in Revelation, it says, hallelujah, hallelujah. for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Yes, Let us be glad and give honor to him. Amen. amen. Come on, give him praise, folks.
risen Savior, our God reigns. Yes. Romans yes. 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth, you say Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. He is mighty to save, yes. he's mighty to heal, yes. he's Thank mighty Lord. to deliver right now. Thank you, Lord. You've come to church with whatever your need is. He is here to help and to deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Show. 
that is everyone's calling. It's not just an evangelist's calling. It's everyone. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said it to all of us. Amen? Amen. And no matter what we face, no matter even if situations are difficult or fearful, we know that 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But of power and of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah, Hope Sinner. You know the word. We praise you, Father, that you've given us power, love, and a sound mind. Receive that. Receive that if you're facing fear in any way. Receive this verse. So it can work in you to deliver you. Praise the Lord.
Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. It's all wrapped up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Repeat after me. Jesus. 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 There's no sweeter name I know. There's no sweeter name I know. Jesus. Thank you for allowing me to go before the Father. For allowing me to go before the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Praise Today's God. reading is from the book of James, first chapter, verses 19 to 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law and gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the reading of your word. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Yes. Praise the Lord, Hope Center. misunderstood my notes. Thank you all for your patience. We're very real here, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to be, this is a time for communion, and um, I, I thought they were singing before communion, but they're singing while you come up and take your communion. That makes the most sense, right? Okay, that was the confusion. It's that time where we get to partake of the Lord's Supper. And it was at the Last Supper, a Passover Seder meal, which we will be doing, a, a Christian, authentic 
Seder meal right here on this campus in our banquet room, Friday, April 15. I just want to put that little plug out there because it's such a beautiful time, a beautiful, I don't want you to miss out on it. But, and it's for children and other things. I'm gonna, I'll talk about that more. But it was at this, it was at the, it was a Passover Seder meal that was Christ's last supper. That was the last supper. It wasn't just sitting around with roast beef and mashed potatoes like we think of. This was a Seder, Seder meal. It was, it was a feast. It was a biblical feast. And it had all this meaning. And it was all about remembering how God had delivered the children from the Egyptians, from oppression. He delivered them miraculously. And so God said, celebrate the feast. Celebrate the feast. Do it. Teach it to your children. Why? So that you can remember the miracles. That's a biblical principle we teach here at Hope Center of Christ. Remember, remember, do not forget the miracles. How important is that to remember how powerful our God is, how strong our God is, how merciful our God is, how he rushes in and rescues us. And that's what he did. When the angel of death was coming over Egypt, when the angel of death was coming there, God instructed them to take a branch of hyssop, the same branch that, I'll talk about that in a minute, a a hyssop branch, and take the blood of a lamb, a lamb that was worthy, a lamb that was without blemish. Take that blood and paint it over the doorpost of the house. And when the angel of death, it says, when the angel of death sees that blood, the angel of death will pass over this whole household. And indeed, that's what happened. That's what happened. And so the whole Passover, and that's, it was that meal, that feast that Jesus was partaking of. The night he was to be arrested. And as he was partaking of the Passover, there's a part where the bread, the matzah, the unleavened bread is broken. And we'll, we'll experience that. It's not just broken like we do here in church. It was smashed. It was broken. And when it was broken in part of the, of the meal, Jesus said, from now on, when you do this, remember, this was my body, which was broken for you. And then when they pass the cup around, which is the cup that is uh, there, four cups, very symbolic in the Passover Seder meal. And when it came to the time of the cup, Jesus said, from now on, whenever you drink this, remember, this is not just juice. This is not just wine. This is my blood, which is shed for you. And indeed it was. His body was broken the next day. His blood was shed the next day so that you and I, the angel of death, passes over us. The angel of death. Today, when you partake of this communion, I want you to remember that. That the the sacrifice that was paid by our Lord Jesus Christ is that to remember that the angel of death passes over you. Passes over your loved ones. The angel of death can no longer touch you or steal the breath of life from you ever again. You have the blessed assurance of life eternal. That's what this is all about. So, prepare your hearts now and just stop for a moment because the scriptures tell us it's important to take this with the seriousness that Christ shared it with us. Just take a moment and say to yourself, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. What do you need to ask forgiveness for? And thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, that mercy, that that blood, that broken body that washes it all away. 
gone forever. Can never be found. That's gone. That sin, that mistake, that fall, that failure has been washed away. And so, Lord, now I forgive others because you forgave me. Bring to mind someone I need to forgive right now. And I see a face in front of me. I hear a name in my mind. Someone who really, 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 really hurt me. I can't forgive them on my own. So Holy Spirit, give me more grace. Help me to forgive. And I do. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And now we will be inviting you in a moment to come forward. And I have, I would like to ask Paul and Debbie, if you'll come forward, they help us, help me assist in serving the communion. And you will be offered a wafer from off of the glass plate. That is Christ, represents Christ's body. They are slippery. People struggle sometimes to pick them up. Don't worry about it. I've been known to drop a whole plate. It's okay. I'm still here. It's okay. God knows this is all about mercy. This is, a, this is grace. That's all of this is about. And then you take it and you'll dip it in the juice and, and take it both together. And I've had people do this. I think every time we serve communion, somebody does this. They take the bread and they eat it and they haven't dipped it in the juice yet. And then they look at me like, oh dear, I've messed up. Again, remember, this is all about grace. If you do that, it doesn't matter. This isn't a test. Just go ahead and take another one. We have plenty and dip it in, okay? So if you need help, you can't walk up here, raise your hand, we will bring the the communion to you. This is, we consider, we call this an open table. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to partake of communion here at Hope Center of Christ. I've already blessed the elements, I believe. Um, So we're going to go ahead, and you may uh, go ahead and take your place, Paul and Debbie. And and just, are you ushering them out, Susan, today? Okay, you are? Okay, here we go. Thank you, Lord.
igreja. So, Lord, we just want to thank you one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your love. A love that is incomprehensible. Thank you for your forgiveness, totally undeserved. Totally without merit. But you forgive us anyway. So, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. And because of it, we have life. We have life. And the angel of death has passed over our house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to welcome all of you today to Hope Center of Christ. This is our the first Sunday of the month. You can always count on it being communion here at Hope Center of Christ as well as potluck. So we hope you'll all stay. And if this is your first time here or you forgot that it was potluck, please stay anyway. We always have plenty of food. So, and we want to thank all of those who are watching um, via the internet. Some of you have contacted me, and it's always a joy to hear how our ministry is blessing you all around the world. And some of you heard, got a chance to see that as I read some testimonies from these people on our anniversary Sunday just a few weeks ago. And I will tell you here in-house that uh, many people do support our ministry financially, and so we want to thank you as well for doing that. In a moment, we will be taking our tithes and offerings. They are given to the Lord, not to Hope Center of Christ. We are mere stewards of the gifts that he gives us to help keep his ministry going. And he continues to bless this ministry, press down, shaken together, and overflowing so we also want you to take time that you have the orange cards in front of you we are a church of prayer we pray and we don't just pray we don't lip service we pray and we see results we pray the way the Lord taught us to pray and so um, if you have a prayer request or even a praise report, please fill that out on the orange cards and stick it in the offering pretty soon because we want to pray for you and we want to thank the Lord for all that he has done.
So coming up, you heard me talk about the the Seder meal coming up, our Passover Seder meal. Meal is a misnomer. We learned that the hard way. We all came hungry and left hungry. Spiritually filled, but our tummies were still rumbling. So eat before you come. It's at, that's why it's at 7. Even if you have to drive through and grab some, some little wrap or something to eat, come with your stomachs full. Um, but it's very symbolic, and it's a powerful, powerful time. I hope you won't miss it. Um, we, want, we want as many people as there as possible. Invite unchurched people. Invite people who don't know the Lord. If you have any questions about how this whole thing works, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and how Jesus is the true fulfillment of the Messiah and the messianic uh, prophecy, how all that Old Testament is a foreshadow, this will show you. I've had people who who were raised Jewish who came to our Passover meal and, and left and said, I now get it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's fun. We're gonna have dramatic readings, we're gonna be there's children, there's games for children. That's what it's intended to be. This is intended to teach. It's a teaching tool for, for families and to teach generation to generation. And like I said earlier, so that we remember, we remember that God, our God, is the king, our God reigns, and that he works miracles and he delivers and he rescues. Even when our back is against the Red Sea. He delivers and he rescues. So that's that's coming up on Friday, April 15th at 7 p.m. So that's really not this coming Friday, but the week after. So it's right around the corner. And we have little handouts that I made for you to take with you because I know how it is. It's nice to have something tangible and you can give it to others and inv- as an invitation as well. Because of that, the Tuesday of that week, we women are not going to be having Bible study. Uh, we're going to be busy getting ready for the um, for the Seder meal. So at this point, you know, I'm I have to I want to invite Richard and Driana to come forward, please. You all know this young couple. They've been here for the last four years. Come on up, Driana. Come on up, Pastor Jim and Pastor Harold, and have your family join you as well, you guys. If you have any family members. Dad, Dad, can you call Mom? Oh, she went to Children's Church? Okay. She will. Don't worry. We'll take, we'll take a few minutes. We'll, we'll make sure she gets here in time. Because, you see, there are times when God calls us to go somewhere else, to get up and leave our father's house, right? That happened to Abraham, it's happened to me. And it's hard, I'm gonna tell you, it's hard when you have fear the, hear the Lord say to you, get up and leave what's familiar. Get up and leave your hometown, get up and go. And, that, and like I said, it happened to Abraham, and if Abraham hadn't gotten up and gone, what would have happened? You know, the whole church, it rested on us, on him being obedient. But the whole point is that today you are leaving, is it this week you guys are moving? Do you want to talk, tell us a little bit what's going on, Richard? Well, uh, just to kind of sum it up, um, me and my family will be moving to New York. I uh, accepted a position out there at a, um, a new hotel in Midtown, so I'll be working literally right across the street from Central Park, so I have a nice view every day. Uh, uh, um, man, I've always wanted, I'm born, we're born and raised in California, you know, uh, we lived away from home, but for a very short period of time. But, uh, you know, it's always been a passion of mine to live out there. Um, I, I love this New York. I love the people, love the atmosphere. So it's, it's not a long-term move, but just, you know, something to get out my system, if you will. Because once Chelsea starts school, then the odds are it's probably, you know, 18 years after high school, we'll have to revisit this. <laughs> but um, 
you know, it's, it's just a, a blessing. Uh, you know, everything we've asked for and prayed for as far as the, the wages we would need to make to live more than comfortably, that God exceeded that. You know, he's, he's been um, doing over and above, uh, you know, every single prayer. Everybody's been very encouraging and reassuring and, you know, blessing us, um, you know, beyond beyond what I'm a every I think people have known and I feel like I may have said this before I don't stress out about anything like everything kind of just rolls over if it happens if it's God's timing if it's his if it's not you know then he has something better and we actually attempted to move two years ago I went out there for four interviews it was literally a turnaround trip flew out there had four interviews came back everything went well but just nothing transpired and now two years later you know he, he had something better and it was his timing so we're, we're just so grateful and you know overwhelmed with all the the packet and stuff but uh, very very overjoyed and we're gonna miss you guys I mean luckily we have the opportunity to see um, you guys online because we won't have a church home immediately out there so Hope Center of Christ will forever be our church home try to not like cry so you guys can't understand me. Okay, when we first started coming to this church, I, some of you guys have heard this story before, but it's all relevant. <laughs> We got into a car accident when I was in my third trimester, pregnant with Chelsea. And we lived right around the corner from Crystal Cathedral. And um, the car got totaled. Um, Richard ended up losing his job for being a good husband and coming with me to doctor's appointments. We were in the, at the hospital four times a week getting Chelsea tested because it kind of induced early labor and just, you know, so for the whole last three months of our pregnancy, she, <clears throat> my pregnancy, she, we were at the hospital four times a week, no car, borrowing car from family. We couldn't go make it to our church home. Um, and so we ended up walking to Crystal Cathedral. And it was actually like four weeks before we separated. And the last week, we weren't gonna go because we woke up late or whatever. And um, I was like, Richard, let's just go. I don't care if it's we can get 10 minutes. We just have to go. I just wanna go. And we went and we walked in, and that's when Pastor Shoot was telling the announcement that they're gonna be going to another church. And I was like, we gotta go to that new church. And I've seen um, Hour of Power on TV before. It's not. <laughs> what our past churches looked like. So <laughs> we, we wouldn't have went unless we had to go. We wouldn't have went on our own, but because we had no other options, that's the only place that was close enough for us to walk. And so I know God allowed that situation to help us find where we needed to be. And shortly after that, um, we had to leave our apartment and we had to move in with my parents, which was so hard for me. Not, I mean, other people, you know, might say, oh, big deal, you have to live with your parents. But I had like a really high level of faith that God was going to work it out. And it was just like a, a really confusing time for me. I grew up in church. I've always been taught to have a lot of faith. So... When that didn't work out, it just, just rocked me. Like I've never been rocked before. And you guys have seen me up here. Worship dance is really personal to me and it's almost embarrassing being up here and like showing your heart like that. When I'm really worshiping God and everyone else is watching it, it's, 
it's hard to do that sometimes. And I'll be sobbing, and I know people are like, what's wrong with her, you know? But I was, I mean, Hope Center of Christ was my shelter when the whole rest of the week would have been awful. And even, I mean, I would pray at home and stuff, but like coming here and feeling the presence of God was like vital to me surviving these tests. And if I didn't come every week and feel him, I, I don't know if my faith would have stayed during this time. I don't know if we would have lasted. I mean, praise God, our marriage really has not suffered. We pulled together through this. But I can't say that for sure that would have happened if I wasn't, had a, I didn't have a place. And I'm so glad that Gretchen is here because God put her in my life to when I'd, be, when I'd be crying out and saying, I need a word from you and I can't hear it on my own. My brain is too clouded. And she wouldn't come to me that Sunday with a word for me. She let me cry and I hate being like negative and stuff, but she would just let me cry and complain sometimes. And she was just there to not only encourage me, but just be compassionate to me and and tell me, you know, you have gone through a hard time and that's okay to be confused and God's going to work it out for you. And I also have to say to um, Debbie Smith, the day that we had to move out of our house and we, it was the first day at our new church outside of the hotel and you talked about God giving you a home or something and I was like, wow, that is rude, Lord knowing that I just lost my home. And I like ran out dramatically <laughs> of the church. It was so embarrassing. And um, Miss Debbie like ran out after me. She's like, what's wrong, you know? And she was the first person really to talk to me that I really opened up to. And you know, I always say how obsessed I am with the worship team, but the reason why is because I needed that worship during those hardest times when I just didn't know what was going on and anyway today you know I was one of the songs that we were dancing to I just don't remember it now <laughs> 10 minutes later but um it's like I remember so vividly dancing broken hearted <laughs> just broken hearted to those songs that Scott wrote. And I know he hears from God and I know he hears on what days to play them. And I feel like I'm dancing to this song again. And last time I danced to it, I needed a miracle. And I'm dancing again to it and it still hasn't come. And I, can, I don't know how many times I can dance to this without, without getting my breakthrough. But I would still just do it anyway because I, I needed it probably more than God needed me to do it. I needed to fill him. And just these past couple weeks, listening to some of the old songs that I've danced to brokenhearted and now coming full circle and not having that pain, even though, <laughs> I probably am crying the same amount, <laughs> but it's just more of like reflecting and remembering Our family has been through a lot. <laughs> and this church has been such a blessing for us because at, in past churches, people talk about us because we have too much faith and stuff wasn't happening for us and they thought we were crazy. Even, I mean, Christian people were like, y'all gotta calm down. My dad, he's like, the, you know, the trailblazer, he, he won't. And, you know, me and my brother have been talking about this so much. It's like stuff is happening for our family. And I know it's because of the prayers of this church. And I know it's because of the time that I spent sobbing in front of all you guys worshiping God. And um, about a month ago, I, me and my dog got attacked by two dogs. And I mean, okay, if you don't have a dog, you may not understand, but people who have dogs, it's like 
watching something that you love almost literally being ripped apart. I literally thought that they were going to kill her. And I thought I was going to have to watch it with my own eyes. And I just was fighting them. And God sent two people to fight the dogs off for me when I couldn't do it. And all I knew when I, they were biting me, they were biting my dog, and all I knew was to just scream, the blood of Jesus. And I'm just, I'm really proud of this church, and I'm proud of like, I mean, I know I'm younger than you, but I'm just proud of watching you grow and like listen to the Holy Spirit and I couldn't have gone to a church without a pastor and pastors who listen to the Holy Spirit and say what he is telling them to say and do what they are he is telling them to do. And I just, I'm happy to be going to this new chapter. I'm sad to be experiencing from afar what is going to be happening in this church because I just see so much just like so much healings and just more stuff than you could ever imagine and oh I just brought up the dog thing just to say thank you guys for praying for me and um, just to just prove how much God is working in our lives and I know it's because of this church and um and when that happened, I was like, okay, Lord, I know Richard has a job. That was before we found out that he got the job. I was like, okay, we, I know he has a job now because this is just crazy. So um, it's just a lot. But I just want to thank you guys so much. I know I look just emotional up here, but it's a reason why I've been so emotional all these years. And I just want to do it from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank the worship team because I was – born a worshiper and I couldn't go to a church that didn't have real, real, real worship. Real worship. And sorry for taking so long. Well, you probably see where she gets her passion from. <laughs> Praise God. But I, I really felt like I, I needed to say what I'm about to say and I'm, I'm going to keep it short but I, I want to publicly acknowledge my son-in-law you know I love my daughter she looks just like my mother that's a blessing uh, but I wanted <laughs> but I did want to publicly acknowledge you Richard um, and thank you also Pastor Sheila a few Sundays ago you you spoke a word and you used the PowerPoint and, and you showed, you talked about a man that had fallen off the cliff and my name is Cliff. And, <laughs> and then he grabbed onto a branch and he started praying and said, you know, help me, Lord. He said, you got to let go of the branch. I knew then what God was saying. It was too close. His last name, Branch, my first name, Cliff to let go and that in order to let go there are going to be more things that God has for us and so I know this is not a loss I, I share with my son this morning that this is just the beginning and I remember before you all got married you you were looking for a place and like most parents we were trying to give our input and and Richard found the place on his own in, in Garden Grove. We wouldn't be here if you didn't find that place at Garden Grove. And so many things, my wife, Andriana, they, they all know that the blessings that were just, seemed like they were just on delay, just started coming out when we came to Hope Center of Christ. And so that just gives me the peace and the confidence to know, Richard, I'm, I'm proud of you. You're a leader, and I know this tugging on your heart to go to New York. We don't know exactly how God's going to do it, but I know it's a good thing, and I love you, and I wanted to publicly acknowledge you.
Well, you know, St. Paul. <clears throat> St. Paul, when he was getting further along in his, he knew his ministry was coming to a close. He said in 2 Timothy 4, he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I've kept the faith. But prior to him saying that, he gave these words of encouragement and exhortation to Timothy. You know, we're, we're the old guys here on the block, like it or not. Jim's quite a bit younger, but Harold and I, we're the old guys on the block. And we're, the, we're, we're not going anywhere. We're not, we're not retiring or anything like that. But my point is that it's our call and our duty as pastors to raise up and prepare the younger ones. That's our call for as long as God gives us. And so when he had completely prepared and trained Timothy, he sent Timothy. He sent him. He didn't keep him. He didn't say stay. He sent him. He sent Timothy. And these are the words that he gave to Timothy before he sent him. Now, sometimes I give words of knowledge as some people call them in some churches but sometimes i give words that are that rihanna and driana has not necessarily liked i don't know if you're going to like this one either my dear because this is what the word the lord told me to say to you these are the words from saint paul to timothy but you keep your head in all situations endure hardship do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Don't let one single one of those duties of ministry that the Lord has entrusted to you drop. You're going to New York. You're being sent. The Lord is sending you there. We hate to see you go, but we are excited about what the Lord will do through your family for your family. Just because you're going somewhere new and exciting doesn't mean you will not face hardship. So endure it, because I'm going to tell you there's hardship everywhere. But you can endure it. You've learned how to do that. So endure it. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, walking your dog in Central Park, working at a hotel, you're an evangelist. You let your light shine, let your light shine. I would like for the pastors to have you guys stand right up here in the middle, please. Face me, face the worship team. And family, lay your hands on them. Pastors, lay your hands on them. Congregation, stretch your hands out. We're, because you're being sent being sent. Lord God Almighty, thank you, thank you, thank you for Richard. Thank you for Adriana. Thank you for Chelsea. Yeah, what a gift she is. And you protected her there in her mother's womb. And you have a plan for her life, a plan for good and not evil to give her a future and a hope. And Lord, you have called you have called Richard, Andriana, and Chelsea to New York City. And Lord, that is a, it's a dark place. It's a dark place, but their light shines bright. You knew you needed a bright, 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 bright light. I see you guys as such a bright light in this dark city. And Lord, we pray protection over them, protection against any who would try to, the enemy who would try to come and extinguish the light or try to dim the light. But Lord, we pray that you will not only protect their light, but hold them up high, hold them up high, that their light can be seen for miles around. And we pray selfishly that you'll bring them back when they're done lighting up New York City. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing and the love that they have been to all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
and your feelings have died and you can't even cry put your trust in God Somebody say amen. amen. Woo. What do you think? Oh, yeah, we need to take an offering, Sheila. We got to pay the rent. So we're going to take the offering. Oh, oh before, you, before you start passing, let's pray for the offering. Lord God, for these gifts that are being handed to you, Lord God, bless them, multiply them like loaves and fish that we may touch the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Try to get away without the preacher giving. I'm telling you. Woo! What do you think? You've already had a message today. I should just give the benediction and be done with it. You're not getting off that easy. It's only 1130. I'm looking at a clock right there. So what do you think? I, I have to apologize for my attire this morning. Um, it's all Harold Shaw's fault. Got up, took my shower, and opened the drawer, and I saw those Wrangler black jeans in there that I love to wear on the weekend, because I have to dress up on, during the week for my job. So I'm like, eh. Then I looked at the closet, and I stood there, and I actually said, what would Harold Shaw wear? And I, my eye caught this gold tie, and I go, what would Harold wear with a gold tie? He'd wear a nice black suit and a white shirt. And I go, I might actually look as good as Harold Shaw today. <laughs> Which is hard to do. And then I walk up to church, 
And Harold's wearing this red blazer. He's looking, man, I need to get myself a red suit because you look really good in that red blazer. So uh, I'm trying to be best dressed at Hope Center, and it still didn't work. I'm telling you, something's wrong. All right, are you ready for this? I'm not sure you're ready for this, but I'm ready for this. I hope you're ready for this. All right, we're going to read from John 11. You're welcome to follow along if you want, but I'm reading from the message version. So this is going to be kind of a modern-day translation of this. John 11. When somebody gets there, say amen. All right, enough of you have gotten there. The rest of you, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And then go to, okay, you got it. John 11, message version says, A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. This was the same Mary who massaged the Lord's feet with aromatic oils, then wiped them with her hair. You remember that story? Okay. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love so very much is sick. Pause right there a second. How many of you in here send a text message? Oh, come on. Text. Anybody text? All right, everybody texts, right? You know, there are certain type of texts that get a response and others that don't get a response. This is a focused message from Mary. It says, Master, the one you love is sick. Not Lazarus is sick. Not my brother Lazarus is sick. The one you love is sick. She's trying to elicit a response. Keep going. Verse 4. When Jesus got the message, he said, This sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Verse 5. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, but oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, He stayed on where he was for two more days. He loved Lazarus so much that he waited two days before doing anything about it. You got it? After two days, Jesus said to his disciple, let's go back to Judea. The disciple said, Rabbi, you can't do that. The Jews are out to kill you, and you're going back? Verse 9, Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daylight doesn't stumble because there's plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he's going. Jesus said these things, and then he announced, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to go wake him up. The disciple said, Master, if he's gone to sleep, he'll get a good night's rest and wake up feeling fine. Jesus was talking about death while his disciples thought he was talking about taking a nap. Then Jesus became explicit. Lazarus died. And I'm glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Now let's go get him. Wow. Now when we think about the story of Lazarus, we really think about the power of Jesus to give one word and something happens. One word. Jesus would say, your faith has made you well, and a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years is healed. Child, get up, and a child who has died gets up. Wow. Stand up, take up your mat, and walk, and an invalid stands up, takes up his mat, and walk. Wow. One word from Jesus, and the impossible is possible. So the word for today for you is... To, The word for you today is rise. Rise. Jesus is going to say to somebody, probably many of you in here today, rise. 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 And in that word, Jesus is saying, what hinders you from trusting me? I did not say what hinders you from believing in me. You may have given me your soul. You may have gotten your fire insurance and say, I know I'm going to heaven now, but do you trust him? It's a different level of faith to believe than to trust. Do you get it? Now, Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 13, 8 says, before, or Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, 
What hinders you from trusting him? And we're going to talk about three attitudes today, three attitudes towards Jesus that all of us hold that are in this story of Lazarus. Now, you're going to have to, you know, stay focused on this because these attitudes are not going to come in order packaged one, two, three. This is not a typical three-point sermon. There are just three attitudes that are spread all over the story of Lazarus, and they're the same attitudes we have today. So pay attention to this. Attitude number one is, Jesus, I trust you no matter what happens. No matter what circumstances are in my life, I trust you. That's attitude number one. Attitude number two is, Jesus, where are you? I call this the if-only attitude. Jesus, where are you? That's attitude number two. Attitude number three is, Jesus, I'm not sure I like this miracle. That's attitude number three. Your choice of miracles flies in the face of my dreams and my plans. Your answer to my prayer flies in the face of my agenda. Couldn't you have chosen the miracle I wanted and not the one you wanted? Jesus, I'm not sure I like this miracle is attitude number three. So you got it? Number one, I trust you, Jesus, no matter what. Number two, if only you would have come sooner. Attitude number two. And attitude number three, not your will, but my will be done. Those are the three attitudes we're going to talk about today. You got it? All right. So let's get into the story of Lazarus. The story begins, a man named Lazarus is sick. Now, we don't know what he has. We don't know what the sickness is, but he doesn't look good. Mary and Martha know he doesn't look good. And they're worried. And, you know, Mary takes a look at Lazarus and says, you know what? If Jesus will come, him walking in the room, my brother will be fine. I just need to get in here. That's all she thinks. Jesus, the one you love is sick, is the message she sends. She just wants to get in there. And she knows that is going to take care of everything. Now, Mary sends word off and a funny thing happens. Jesus doesn't show up right away. Now, when you send a message off and you're worried, Mary's doing exactly what we do in our kitchens, in our houses, in our workplace. She starts pacing the floor. Been five minutes since I sent that message. How come the text hasn't come back? Uh, it's been a half an hour. How come the phone hasn't rung? It's been a day. This is, this is not looking good. This is not looking good. They worry. Mary and Martha start worrying. I can, yeah, I can picture the household. Can you picture the household of Mary and Martha? Oh, Lazarus, you don't look too good. He doesn't look good, Mary. He doesn't look good. Oh, you don't look good at all. Where's Jesus? I, I sent the message. You know, it's okay. Jesus is going to come. Where is he? right? Anybody been there? Come on, you can confess. You're not that holy. That's exactly what we do. They are filled with worry. My checking account is empty, Jesus. I prayed for this problem. Where are you? Wow. Whoo. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. My marriage needs rescue. I don't know what I'm going to do. Jesus, where are you? I believed you were going to show up. I need a car. I believed you were going to show up. Don't you need a car? Jesus, do you know that I need a car to get to work in order to make income, in order to tithe to the church? So why don't you get me the car already? All right? Are you there? You got it. Interesting thing is Jesus' plan is beyond all this human drama. It's beyond all of that. In the midst of all this worry, Jesus says, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that my glory might be revealed. In other words, trust me. Jesus says everything's under control. When are you going to trust me? Time has no authority over me. That's what Jesus is saying. Circumstances have no authority over me. That's what Jesus is saying. Wow. Write this down. Isaiah 40, 31. Before I read the verse, I'll give you a line. Miracles happen when we have the faith to wait on the Lord. 
Because Isaiah 40, 31 says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And we usually skip over the wait part. Those who on the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. Doesn't say that. It says those who wait. Wait. Ask my wife. I hate to wait for anything. Anything. But my mother taught me years ago to stop praying for patience because the more I prayed for patience, the more God put me in situations where I needed patience. Just to teach me patience. Be careful what you pray for. God will put you in a situation until you learn to wait on him. Wait on the Lord. A few days pass, the two days pass, and Jesus says to his disciples, come on. It's time to go back to Judea. It's time to go take care of Lazarus. Now, we run smack into attitude number three. I'm not sure I like this miracle. And it comes on behalf of the disciples. Because don't you know a miracle doesn't always happen to you unless God uses that person to make it happen. You get the point? Attitude number three, I'm not sure I like this miracle, is coming from the disciples. The disciples say, wait a minute, Jesus. The Jewish leadership just tried to stone you not more than a week ago in Judea. You can't go back there. If you go back there, it's going to get ugly. And if it gets ugly for him, it's going to be very ugly for us. I'm not sure I like this miracle. And sometimes it is, I'm not sure I like this miracle because you're making me be a miracle for that person. And I don't love them that much. I don't love Harold that much that I want to be God's miracle for him. You get the point? Jesus, I'm not sure I like this miracle. Wow. In other words, walking into that kind of danger goes against my will. Some of you, it's like us saying today, don't you understand, Jesus? I can't tithe. I don't make enough money. I can't help take care of the homeless. That's scary. I can't go on a mission trip to Mexico. There's drug lords having wars down there, and I might get caught in the crossfire. Jesus, your idea of a miracle flies in the face of my will. And yet Jesus' response to all this fear is very interesting. He says, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. In other words, stop worrying about your life. If you ask, if I ask you to do something, do as I ask you to do. You can't get hurt because I am the light of the world and I am in you and I'm taking care of it. Come on. We, have a, we, have a, we go to a church down in San Diego where the pastor is, is fond of saying the words, Come on, somebody. It gets the point across, doesn't it? I kind of like that. Wow. If Jesus asks you to do something, your life will not come to an end before God's appointed time for you. So, do you trust me, Jesus is saying? Yes, Lord, I trust you. Good, then deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Danger zones do not matter. You need to strap on a little Austin Powers and say, danger is my middle name. Well, come on, you're not that holy. Danger is my middle name. Wow. Now, at this point, the disciple named Thomas says, let us go that we may die with him. You've got to love Thomas. I'm not sure he said it that way. There could be two ways that Thomas said that. Let us go that we may die with him. One way is exasperation. Okay, fine. I guess we're going with him. I guess we're going to die, but we're going with him. So, okay, Lord, we're going. Come on. You said we got to go, so we're going to go. That's exasperation. That's attitude number one. Submission is the other one. I will go with Jesus no matter what the cost. When Jesus calls, what's your reaction? Exasperation, begrudging, or submission? Interesting point. Back to Mary and Martha's place. Martha heard that Jesus was coming 
and rushes out to meet him. I need a Jesus. Joe, cop ahead. I need, you're going to play Jesus. So Joe, stand up. Oh, come on. Everybody knows that Joseph and Mary wouldn't have had an easier time giving birth to Jesus on the beach in Hawaii versus Nazareth. Okay, go stand back in the middle of the row back there. You're coming up the road. Keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. You're coming from, you're coming from a long ways away, and this is Judea you're going to. All right, that's good. That's good. That's far enough that I can see you without my glasses on, right? Okay, so Mary and Martha's place. Martha sees Jesus coming. And we've always read this story of saying, what took you so long, Jesus? Lazarus is dead. If you'd have been here sooner, my brother wouldn't have died. You know, we've heard that in church. This is what really happened. Jesus! Where have you been? If you'd have been here two days ago, Lazarus would still be alive. Where have you been? Where's he been? Thank you, Joe. Now you know that's the truth. Because that's how we react. That's the truth. That's the truth. Where have you been? What took you so long? Wow, that's the if only attitude. If only you'd have shown up sooner, my house would have not been foreclosed upon. My relationship would not have crumbled. We would not be in bankruptcy. If only you would have been here, Jesus. That's the why me prayer. That's attitude number two. Why me? Yet, interesting. The Bible says, you know, even in Martha's grief, she actually catches herself. She has all this pent-up anger that she throws at Jesus, and then she catches herself. She realizes something and says, Jesus, but even now, even in this, even in death, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, be of good cheer, Martha. Be of good cheer. Your brother will rise again. Now, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Martha says, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Now, don't let this moment pass because you just actually witnessed the miracle of the story. Not necessarily Lazarus walking out of the grave. You just witnessed the miracle. The miracle is when Martha's response is as big a miracle as Lazarus walking out. In spite of your circumstances, when you can say, Jesus, I trust you with my life, period, no matter what, miracles happen. Don't ever forget, that's the miracle of this story. Unlike Martha, Mary stays buried in her grief. She goes through the same reaction. Jesus, where are you? Where are you? Why didn't you come sooner? Lazarus would still be alive. Wow. But she doesn't catch herself. She stays buried in her grief. She doesn't do like Martha did and says, even now, Lord, I trust you. Mary stays buried in her grief. Wow. Lost in her grief rather than trusting her Savior. This is where we come to the shortest verse in the Bible. Two words, John eleven thirty five. 35. <laughs> it says, Jesus wept. Now, I have a big question for you. Why was Christ weeping? He knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, so why was he weeping? He knew he was going to hug his friend again, so why was he weeping? He knew the sisters were about to get their brother back, so why was he weeping? All right, give me a minute. We're going to come back to it. Let's come back to that. Because the next thing Jesus said is, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot in grave clothes, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. One word from Jesus, Lazarus, come forth. And many believed that Jesus was the Son of God. 
I know if I would have been there and watched a dead man who'd been stinking and rotting in a grave for a couple of days come walking out, I would believe that he was the Son of God. Not necessarily for everybody who was there. Not necessarily. Let's go back to that shortest verse in the Bible where Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? One of the most critical questions that you can ask yourself. Again, you might be tempted to say he was weeping for Lazarus. Or he was weeping for Mary and Martha in their grief and their loss. I guarantee you that's not why Jesus was weeping. Why? Because he was about to give the greatest gift to Mary and Martha. And he was about to hug his friend again. It's like at Christmas. Do you weep? tears when you're handing somebody a present. You're excited because you want to see them open it. You're excited. So why was Jesus weeping? Why was Jesus weeping? Wow. Jesus was weeping not for Lazarus, Lazarus nor Mary and Martha, but for the Jewish leaders who were standing nearby. Jesus knew that God was about to reveal his full glory in Christ and raise Lazarus from the dead. Jesus knew Martha already believed that Jesus was the Son of God, but sadly, Jesus knew what the reaction was going to be from some of the people to Lazarus' resurrection. He knew the chief priest was going to say, which he did, What shall we do? For this man, Jesus, works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe him, and the Romans will come away and take both our place and our nation. A dead man lives, but that kind of miracle flies in the face of somebody else's personal agenda. Wow. That's why Jesus wept. He wept for those concerned about their own will instead of God's will being done. I guarantee you, this is going to be a tough statement, I guarantee God has performed miracles in your life and you did not recognize them because they weren't the miracle you wanted. I've done that. You complain when you perceive your circumstances have not gone your way and you fail to say, God, not my will, but yours be done. Because you don't know what he has planned down the road. You don't know what he's trying to teach you today that's going to benefit you two years from now. You don't know. You're lost in your grief, and you've stopped trusting. One of the greatest lines I ever read in my life, greatest lines came from my father-in-law. I read it in a book, and I about dropped the book. I was so shocked. The book said, so you just got fired. Congratulations! You are now free to dream and do anything that God is calling you to do. Wow. I remember reading that line, and then when, actually, when I got fired, asked my wife, my reaction was, wow, hallelujah. Because I knew God had something in store. Didn't know what it was. Was it scary? Yeah, but it was also a hallelujah. God, you got something new in store. And he did. It's me in San Diego with my wife. Doing the Lord's work in a ministry that's reaching the world, operating in a hundred countries on the ground, not, not on TV through airwaves. We're talking about boots on the ground, churches being built, orphanages being built, hospitals being built on the ground, boots. It's a new world for me, and I'm excited. God has something more in store. Wow. At the beginning of this message, I asked you a question. What keeps miracles from happening in our lives? Are you ready for the answer? We do. We do. What keeps miracles happening in our lives? We do. Quite frankly, God is performing answers to prayer all around us, but they do not fit neatly into our timing, our dreams, our personal agenda, so we don't recognize them as miracles. Wow. I guarantee you, Moses did not want to wander in the desert for 40 years. I guarantee you, Daniel did not want to end up in the lion's den. 
I guarantee you that Paul did not want to sit in a cold, dark, rat-infested prison writing the book of Philippians. But it's really hard to sit on the beach in Hawaii and write, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's easy. If you're sitting in chains in a cold, dark prison with rats around your feet, it's a little tougher to say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I, get, I guarantee you Jesus did not want to go to the cross. But in each case, they said, not my will, God, but your will be done in my life. So today, from the story of Lazarus, you need to decide, are you a critic who says, God, I want my will, not yours? Are you a Mary, simply lost in your grief? Or are you Martha, saying, I trust you, Jesus, no matter what? Lord God, I thank you. Ooh. Wow, that's a powerful word, Lord. It's not from me, it's from you. Lord God, let it penetrate somebody here today because they need a breakthrough. Their breakthrough is they've been relying on themselves, they've been fighting your will, they've been fighting your agenda because they've been trying to advance their own. Lord God, grant them a breakthrough today. Let them stop fighting. And realize, Lord, that you have a plan for their life, a plan of good and not evil, a plan to prosper them and not to harm them, a plan to give them a future and a hope. Oh, Lord God, grant that miracle today, a breakthrough, a breakthrough of trusting in you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Jim, thank you, worship team. What a, what a blessing, blessing from the Lord. Um, in a moment, uh, we'll give you the benediction. Uh, just a reminder, we have uh, potluck right afterwards. Please feel free to stay, um, even if it's just for a cup of coffee with us, but eat. I mean, there's good food there. And there's a reception for the branch family, for Richard and Driana. Give them a hug, give them a prayer. Give them your contact info so you can stay in touch and pray for them. And, um, and then get your little handout for the, our Passover Seder meal. I guarantee you this is something very, very special. Can't do it every year because the calendar doesn't always permit, so don't miss it. So stand now for the benediction because the Lord wants to bless you. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace that passes all understanding. Thank you. May he give you faith that is unshakable, hope that is unsinkable, and love that is unquenchable. God loves you, and we do too. Amen. Amen. Amen, Hope Sinner. Well, that's all right. The Lord is my light Hallelujah. and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be afraid? Do you receive you, that in Jesus' yes. name? Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Just give him praise. Yes. Give him honor. Yes. Give him glory. Thank you.
my troubled mind He carries me Comforts me When I'm going through the storm oh, Protect him in his arms oh, My father loves me And that's why I say Destroy me, try and make me fall. He puts me on a rock out of the reach of them all. When my enemies try to hurt me, I don't have to worry. I'm in his care, not just here. Where I seek my God's face He gives me strength to go on Oh, don't you know, don't you know That He carries me Over mountains He comforts me When I'm going through the storm strong tower he is my hiding place from day to day he is my strength oh lord you are my light lord and you know what thing you want one thing one thing one thing Whom shall I fear? God bless you, Hope Center. Don't forget our little luncheon next door. And we'll see you next week. Love you. Praise the Lord.